there, it's Kevin with RogueDeckBuilder.com here with this week's episode of the Market Monday. So today we are going to talk about none other than the banned and restricted announcement with some major changes to modern, which means there's going to be some major price changes as well in modern from not only cards that were banned and unbanned, but just the entire meta in general is going to get switched up. And we'll look at that and see if there's any opportunity for uh, a, to get out of cards that I think are also going to go down because of the banning, and B, get into cards that might either play an alternative role to Faithless Looting or might just be better now that these particular decks are gone. So anyway, let's just get started with the announcement here. We have Hogak, which is banned, and Faithless Looting, which is banned, and Stoneforge Mystic, which is unbanned. And I've been a pretty vocal person about saying that we should probably... Uh, try Stoneforge Mystic out in Modern because there are just so many uh, cards that actually just shut down Stoneforge Mystic or it's just at this point in time when we have such a turn three format where it might not even be relevant uh, in a format that needs to be able to race Tron and Stone Stoneforge Mystic isn't going to do anything against Tron in my opinion. Speaking of Tron, Tron just got a lot better because probably the biggest boogeyman, two of the biggest boogeyman decks, Hogak and Arclight Phoenix, are are now, uh, well, Hogak's gone, gone, and Dredge gets goes back to what Dredge was. Actually, Dredge even gets a little bit worse with Faithless Looting. They have to find another alternative. Uh, but Tron did struggle against both Hogak decks and did struggle against Arclight Phoenix decks. So with those out of the way, I think that Tron is pretty much unopposed. And it might give a rise to Tron, and we can start looking at decks that actually do well against Tron as as uh, potential decks that could go up in value. So standard, we have the Rampaging Ferocidon. Who cares about that? Standard's dead. It's only a few, what, weeks now before rotation. So Rampaging Ferocidon for just a couple weeks, I don't think is going to really get anyone too excited to invest in the card. Uh, Dinosaur's got a little bit be uh, better, but if you're investing in standard cards at this point and not rotation proof cards then you are a fool anyway let's get right into the faithless looting so faithless looting is going to take a nosedive it already was reprinted in commander uh 2019 and it was already starting to go down uh but this was a car that was worth around a buck and yeah this is going to be down to i don't know 25 cents i would say at the end of the after this because it's really modern that it does see the play in it doesn't see too much play in other formats like commander does play it but look how many printings this card has had uh that is really modern just because it was the most played card in modern uh, during the hogak and the arclight phoenix uh, rain and it's also in many other decks that's what made this card so good because the graveyard is such a good strategy in modern and even throughout all the hate cards have been added to modern it just doesn't seem enough to really stop cards like faithless looting so faithless looting was put in in two major decks like i said before the hogak and the phoenix but it's also be it sees play in dredge and reanimator reanimator really really hurts by uh getting rid of it and i'm not looking at the legacy reanimator i'm looking at other modern reanimator strategies that try to put faithless looting so like the goro's vengeance types decks they're gonna have a hard time uh putting the uh, vengeance in the graveyard and then reanimating it now you have to use other uh, ways to do so and there are some in modern but again nothing so efficient that really fixes your hand and sets you up for it uh, this does see a little bit of play in popper but not much and you can see this Rakdos elemental deck that was starting to see uh, more play also use the faithless looting so I actually think there is a good alternative to Faithless Looting for many of these decks, and this is Burning Inquiry. I think a lot of decks are going to just morph over to Burning Inquiry decks because many of them don't care about the cards that are in their hand. They just need enough cards in their graveyard. So maybe the Phoenix not so much because you do, did want to guarantee the Phoenix is in your graveyard. That's what's really weird about Burning Inquiry, and we'll have to wait and see if just the, the variance is just too much for these decks to survive. But Burning Inquiry draws three cards, and then three cards go in into the bin at random uh, but remember the variance can hit your opponent just as as bad as it can hit you and that's why some people didn't like running in like this mirror-esque type uh, meta where a lot of other people uh, do utilize their graveyard you don't want to fill up your opponent's graveyard as well but burning a quarry at least on your end puts three in in the yard and you, you so draw three and then discard three at random and if you are a deck that just cares about as many things as possible in your graveyard you're not going to care too much about it so you can see that burning a quarry has started to spike up in value i do think it's a, a good alternative for dredge for sure it actually does put one more card in the graveyard and like i said not many dredge uh cards in dredge care where they're at it's still going to 
uh, put the dredge cards in the graveyard, hopefully, and it might just be enough to have that extra card uh, that Faithless Looting did not provide. The Phoenix, though, I think that it is a lot worse because you do want specifically the Phoenix in your, your graveyard. So if you burn an inquiry and find you know, your two Phoenixes get stuck or your three Phoenixes at that point get stuck in your hand, then it is kind of a feel-bad scenario. So you might see other decks like going over Cathartic Reunion or Torment of Voice or just playing uh, other just outlets to discard. Uh, we'll have to wait and see how that unravels. But regardless, I think Burning Inquiry is a pretty good spec at this point. It could go back up to its $4 range if it does see home. And if it does see a home in a Tier 1 deck that somehow... Uh, just the meta gets kind of solved again for like a Hogak, Dredgish type style. Of course, Hogak Span, but a Dredgish type style that does run Burning Inquiry. Then this card could easily go through the roof. We've seen commons go all the way up to like six, seven bucks, no problem. Uh, from modern in the past. So keep your eye on Burning Inquiry. The foils have already gone through the roof as well. They're 13 bucks a piece. Uh, that ship has sailed, in my opinion. So Faithless Looting, let's just kind of look at some of the cards surrounding Faithless Looting. The first card that I think gets hurt is Manamorphos. Uh, two out of the three decks that util utilize Faithless Looting also utilize Manamorphos. So if you come down here, we look at Mono Red Phoenix and Is It Phoenix. Storm didn't, but even some of the other ones that are down the list... Uh, the, the, the good old combo with just trying to cast as many spells as possible did have the Faithless Looting Manamorphos combo. So the, the cards that do survive, like Phoenix, if it can survive without Faithless Looting, uh, Manamorphos, or if it doesn't survive, then Manamorphos is going to get hit there. Uh, Storm has just not been that great lately to begin with. And Neobrand, it is a cute deck, but it also hasn't been having good finishes. I think that if Phoenix does get hit as hard as I think it's going to hit, we are going to see a price drop in Manamorphos. So I do suggest getting rid of your Manamorphos. I mean, it's it's really the highest it's been in a long time. It's been flat for months and months and months. I think this is what the market is willing to pay for an uncommon. There's just a lot of risk involved with Manamorphos getting a reprint, and no one wants to be left stuck in, or holding the bill when it does get a reprint. So I think getting out of Manamorphos is smart. I, I don't see another deck getting better because of the faithless looting like everything that that is getting banned i don't think i don't see a deck that all of a sudden like storm getting better uh because of dredge and and uh yeah like dredge and hogak and phoenix getting nerfed so yeah i i i, I do think getting out of manamorphos a couple other cards too like are like phoenix if you're really thinking that the deck can't survive but most phoenix decks i think will be okay I think that they, yeah, they, I don't know. Maybe the maybe, maybe for this looting will be that uh, big of a hit. So let's just take take a look at Mono Red Phoenix. There's a couple cards here from Mono Red, uh, especially like the uh, Soul Scar Mage that had a a, a a revitalization, even though this was in a challenger deck. I believe it's actually in two challenger decks, if I remember correctly. Um, this could actually see a hit. And then, like, even cards like Finale of Promise and, of course, the namesake card Arclight Phoenix could also take a hit. If we look over at the Is It Phoenix, the same thing can be said about Thing in the Ice. Uh, and same thing can be said about, like, the Finale of Promise and, again, Manamorphos in this uh, list. All these cards could go down as a result of Faithless Looting getting the Banhammer. So let's talk about the Unbanning. So Dredge, Dredge, we'll go back to Dredge real quick. If we go back to Hogak... Uh, this version of Hogak, I think is this is the Dredge version here, I believe. No, it's not. This is kind of a... It does look like it's like a half seas deck here that I'm looking at. Is this the one that just won the latest? So yeah, this is a, 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 a Venge Vine, a Dredge Vine, but it's not utilizing a lot of Dredge cards. I think that we're going to see Dredge go back to Dredge rather than uh, in this kind of half seas. So we're going to see a full... Uh, list of the, the usual suspects in Dredge, the 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 Thug and the uh, the Stinkweed Imp, and I think that at this point it is going to be Burning Inquiry that's going to feed these these decks. So I, there's not a lot of cards here that I think get killed. Maybe Grave Crawler uh, goes down, and Blood Gas will still see play in other Dredge decks. Um, and other than that, Vengevine, probably Vengevine. That's another card that really synergizes highly with Faithless Looting. That's another one that you should probably get rid of. Again, there are some alternatives like Collective Brutality, for example, that is a pick card of which card you discard. This one does get interesting if, if decks start to uh, pick up Collective Brutality. Can like the, the Phoenix deck actually decide to go Collective Brutality? I'm not sure. I think the difference between one and two mana to, to enable Arclight Phoenix is huge. 
And same thing with even Storm. The difference between one and two mana to start enabling the uh, having your cards in in your graveyard on turn one is 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 much different. Just light years ahead of having them go into play cons or into your graveyard consistently on turn number two. So yeah, definitely these are cards to get out of. Uh, I think that you'd be smart with the Venge Vines if you can find buyers and grave crawlers. These cards typically do see play again within a year i would say like the amount of times that i've recycled venge vines venge vine is definitely a card that i've bought low sold high a ton of times uh just because of how it falls out of favor and modern comes back in falls out of favor uh so keep your eye on both of those if they do bottom out many of these cards are just one or two cards away from another printing maybe throne of eldraine drain has like a really good discard outlet somewhere uh they could or or even self mill outlet these cards could once again uh go, get back in popularity and resurgence so uh keep your eye on those cards uh for their bottom so let's talk about stoneforge mystic stoneforge mystic is interesting um there are many decks that could definitely use stoneforge mystic the last time it did see play in the modern format was in a cobblade type shell that was a, a, a uh, leftover from the standard of the time. So modern came into existence right at the same time Stonesford Mystic was in standard or just had recently rotated from standard. And so people, of course, just went with the uh, something that was the known uh, decks that were good with standard and upgrade them with older cards. It was it was kind of like a, a extended, a little bit better than extended at that point. And then it was quickly banned. That and Jace the Mind Sculptor were put on the ban list on the early days of modern. So we actually don't know how powerful Stoneforge Mystic is in modern, but we can look to Legacy as an example of what cards are uh, good with Stoneforge Mystic. And this is where you're going to start to see cards like True Name Nemesis. So the Azorius Stoneblade one has these hard-to-kill type cards like True Name Nemesis. And then the Death and Taxes version has the Wasteland type decks to shut your opponent down. And it's using Stoneforge Mystic as just pure value. That it's a threat that then can go get an, a, 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 like a, a, a JIT or a, a batter school that both have insane value. So it's, it's used as a tutor in those specific decks. So I think that in modern, Stoneforge Mystic is in a totally different place. It can still get the batter school, but it's not enabled as much by being able to lock out your opponent's lands with wastelands and, and early uh, kind of early lockout type strategies. And in this one, there just isn't, or in modern, there isn't just like a, a true name nemesis type card. Like people have already been talking about maybe Bogles, uh, throwing out a hexproof creature, like uh, throwing uh, Stoneforge Mystic on, like I've even heard of people uh, going into like cranial plating and then we, we have the cantrips of like prophetic prism and the astro lab that came out of the uh, modern horizons for like a a stoneforge mystic cranial plating type shell uh the swords too people thinking the swords might be good again uh, especially the protection from the red swords because the removal lightning bolt is still huge as uh, one of the sources of removal uh, so I don't know how I feel about that. I don't know if the, the swords are just too weak for the format. I think the Stoneforge Mystic only really shines with Batter Skull. And again, I'm not sure that it's the same package with Jit and Batter Skull in Legacy to really justify Stoneforge Mystic. Cranial Plating does seem a little bit more realistic. Like where I do think Stoneforge Mystic will start to see play is going to be in some sort of affinity build that is, or robots, is, is going to utilize Stoneforge Mystic, getting the best card, arguably the best card in the deck, which is Cranial Plating hooking up to like ink moth nexuses and blink moth nexuses for this residual threat so i do like it at least in the sideboard i i'd be very very surprised if we don't see that sort of strategy hit modern uh quickly but as you can see though these it is worlds of difference between what this is trying to do in legacy with the shell of being able to uh really really pr protect your like uh, with the 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 force of wills with the like that is, is so so much more powerful to be able to stone for mystic and protect your equipment in legacy than it is in modern it's much more of a glass cannon so i i wouldn't I wouldn't put it past us if we don't see uh, Stoneforge Mystic in high numbers in modern right off the bats. And that the card is spiked up almost to $100 at this point, and it is still unproven. So be care careful with Stoneforge Mystic and be careful with list right out the gate. We typically do see people brew, and when there's everybody and their dog brewing with Stoneforge Mystic, it's going to give you some... Uh, some inaccurate information. It's going to start skewing the numbers and it, we have to wait until the dust settles before we know exactly how prominent and how good Stoneforge Mystic is. 
So again, Bogle shells and cranial plating shells or a mix of the two, I think is where the stone for mystic is going to see play. Uh, prison, maybe a, a white prison based deck too. It's going to be a great card. So think of the proclamation of rebirth type decks with stone, with uh, the sun titans. I think the stone for mystic with batter school is in a pretty good place there as well, especially with being able to re be uh, recurred um, and can't be tutored up with the the. No, those are both legacy cards. I'm trying to think of the recruiters. Those are both legacies, so they're not they're not accessible in modern. So anyway, we'll keep our eye on Stoneforge Mystic. All right, so let's look at Death and Taxes, though, too, just to get a, a, another uh, example. So like this, again, I think JIT, JIT is much better than people are giving it credit for. Than, I mean, everyone keeps talking about Batter School, Stoneforge Mystic, but, I mean, there's a lot of situations where the JIT is just so much better. And this is the enabler. It's Rashad and Port and Wasteland. We don't have access to either one of those in the uh, modern format. All righty, so let's talk about the last thing here. Well, that's actually, we'll look at the metagame for modern, but first let's go over to Commander 2019. So Commander 2019 is doing something interesting here. It is actually rebounding, and I actually do have some information, at least from the store aspect. So uh, if you don't know, I own a store here in Richfield, Utah called Gonro Games. So I'm in contact with distributors, and we've been asking about Commander 2019. And there is going to be another shipment of Commander 2019. But this is, I think, Wizards' latest policy of being as elusive as possible when it comes to information. So uh, what I mean by that is no one has known any sort of print run information or just, like, we are so in the dark. I would say this really started happening about Dominaria era. And every set, even standard sets, have, have, have had a similar pattern. So what Wizards does is they starve us at first. They only give us a very, very low amount of product. And what that does is it causes interest and hype based on scarcity. So everyone flips out. Everyone panics. They're not going to be able to get their cards. So then it then leads to a massive, like, people buying the product more than they would normally buy the product. And... Every set since Dominaria has followed this trend, and then we get saddled with these huge waves. So if you actually look at the prices of, like, Guilds of Ravnica, Ravnica Allegiance, even War of the Spark, and Modern Horizons, and now even Core 2020, they are all dirt cheap. And that wasn't, the, uh, that wasn't how it was week one and week two. Every one of those was, quote-unquote, sold out, and it had that that scarcity. Remember Ravica Allegiance boxes were going for like 110 because no one could get their hands on them. There was just a shortage of them. And now we can get, I mean, I can get uh the 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 bundles. The bundles were 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 put on a sale by the distributors because they were trying to get rid of them. There's just so many bundles and no one was buying it. And the bundles were very, very hard to come by by Ravnica Allegiance. Same thing with Guilds of Ravnica. The booster boxes have no pushback. It is easily uh, had at distributor price or, or close around distributor price, meaning I think Amazon is like $90 shipped for the majority of these booster boxes. And all of these were very, very hard to come by the weeks one and week two. So I'm thinking that that is a new policy for Wizards of the Coast is they 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 kind of do a rope-a-dope uh, with the sealed product where it's like, oh, you better get it, you better get it. And it causes this big buy spree. And then we just get showered with the product later on. So we are seeing a rebound of Commander 2019. I would, I would caution everyone uh, to investing in these particular cards. So there has been some price corrections. The first one being the Sanctum of Eternity. This has gone up to 12 bucks. I think this was like two. Yeah, right here. Two at its low. And that was just way too low for the card because this card just sees so much play throughout Commander now that people are just shoving it in tons of Commanders that have any sort of cast or AETB effect. Uh, this is a great way just to return your Commander to hand and get another... Uh, get another uh, uh, hit off of it and there are even is other other commanders that had those uh when you cast from your hand type effects that didn't work and now think the eternity you can actually cast it from your command zone and then return to your hand and then get some value off of them so for whatever that's worth uh think of eternity is, is enabling a lot of those type of decks so of course it's going to see a price increase this one was just too low the other one with this this S savine's reclamation this one also was too low. These are the two goodies out of the car, uh, out of the the set. They've had some price correction. We've seen the Dockside Extortionist 
be the the kind of the, the the one that's holding its value the best. And we've seen Kirk, Son of Yagmoth go down significantly. Uh, the rest of the reprints, though, some of them have started to rebound, and I caution everyone about these cards because this is this is the market adjusting to the low supply. So I was sold out of Commander. I got an insanely low amount of commanders usually there's no pushback on like at least the, the you have your kind of your pre-order and then all distributors usually have plenty in stock week one every distributor is out of stock i only received a, a handful of commander decks that were quickly sold out it didn't meet the needs that we had at our store and i'm sure that all the rest of the stores were in a similar scenario but i'm expecting a new wave to come now there's what what do i know right now there is another wave that is expected to hit distributors on wednesday so wednesday we will know and what's what's really interesting about was the coast and it just makes me it just baffles me to try to figure out who the hell is running this company like what brain dead person i mean maybe this is a good strategy if it is leading to more sales but i think they would sell more if they'd actually let the market absorb it naturally rather than try to manipulate the market with this 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 feigned sense of scare uh, scarcity so whoever's running it i just i just do not understand their their strategy over at Wizards of the Coast. I don't know that I don't think they know what they're doing. I think it's another one of those job positions that just got shoot in because they needed to check off a diversity point. But anyway, I'll, before I get too political, uh, we'll save that for another day. So anyway, we do know from distributors they are receiving it Wednesday. What I've heard from distributors is they're they they don't know the numbers, so they were in the dark. So my my representative woke up this morning with an email from Wizards saying that there's a new shipment coming their way. And but he's expecting it to be super small. So it might be another one of these feigned scarcity, which we could see another bump in prices when people think that there's not enough to go around. But we did see the last two years of Commander decks be about a month or two out, the supply really ramped up. Now, the Commander 2017 was able to recover very well because we had a, that was the big year that Commander took off. So it was able to absorb all the product and bring in a lot of Commander players and absorb all that new product that, from the, the next waves. Commander 2018 was not, however. Commander 2018 just barely, a couple weeks ago, was still going for your regular MSRP or a little bit under MSRP. Um, I could still get Commander 2018 all the way up till, I want to say April. I want to say April and May, it was still available through distributors. So it didn't sell very well. There was plenty in stock. And uh, I think that, that this one's going to follow the same suit. I don't think that they ramped down production compared to Commander 2018. I think the market is much weaker for Magic in general. And I think that Modern Horizons and Core 2020 are definitely showing uh, that comparatively to like, what was it last year? This or, or, or sets it last year at this time was we had we had what was the summer set. We had Dominaria. Uh, we had. Uh, the, we're all very, very strong sales. Look at Jace's Spellbook versus Gideon's Spellbook, for example. I think Gideon's Spellbook was much better than Jace's Spellbook. However, Gideon's Spellbook is having a hard time selling, where Jace's Spellbook did sell pretty decently. So I, I think those are all market indicators that were, were slowing down as far as the sealed product. There is also the, the collector's edition, Throne of Eldraine outlaws and stuff like that. I don't think that they've ramped down uh, supply of Commander 2019. I think it's the same supply as last year. And there will be plenty to go around. So I, I think if you're focused on this recovery, I think it's a temporary recovery until we get that, that new supply. So all of these cards, I think, are poised for another uh, just get hammered, uh, get crushed in the prices. And there is still a few things that have uh, price to give. But I think these, these top four are your big ones. Maybe these can hold 10 bucks. But I have a hard time even think, thinking they're going to hold that. I think that we're still going to see like the, the Lightning Greaves and the Seedborn Muse. The thing about Lightning Greaves is it's a staple of a staple of a staple. It's something that is, uh, it's in every Commander deck basically. It's it's Soul Ring than Lightning Greaves. Those are like the 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 mainstays of the Commander format. So this is as the best. And Lightning Greaves might as well have been a rare this this year because I believe it's only in one deck. So this one's weird. That was uncommon. So correct me if I'm wrong in the the comment section below. But some of these other cards like Seedborn Muse, I think they have so a ways to even go down further. And even cards like Temp with Discovery, uh, the Ghostly Prison, that's another one that goes in basically every white deck, though, so, so possibly not. Uh, these cards have a ways to go back down. And there's still cards that need to be price-corrected. The, the, the version of 
Com Commander 2019 is still worth more than the cards that they uh, th th than the reprints. I mean, the, the reprint of Commander 2019 is is worth more than the original. So there's still some some price uh, correction to be had for those particular cards. So these are not accurate. Give it some time for Commander 2019. I think it's going to continue to go down in value. All right. So last but not least, let's go ahead and just look at the uh, metagame for modern and where I think it, we're, we're going to head. So first of all, like burn, burn is still going to be, you know, top tier burn always it, the way that burn is right now, it, it's really well positioned to just be that turn four, turn five consistent deck. I think it's always going to be front and center in modern i still like idol on a great rebel as a spec i've called it a couple times it hasn't gone anywhere eventually i think the card is going to go somewhere especially if, it, if we do get some sort of like stoneforge mystic meta i think the eidolon is actually pretty good against those particular decks yeah you can see what cheats in a batter skull but batter skull is a card see, worm coil engine and batter skull are typically cards that i don't think burn has had issue with and if it is they can always bring in smash to smithereens uh, which then punishes them for the batter skull uh, anyway. And if really, at that point, how many batter skulls they need to run in their deck? It really did lose their deck. They're going to get stuck with in their hand. I think all that stuff has things going for burn, not against it for the batter skull, stormforge, mystic uh, combo. So I think burn is still in a pretty good uh, shape. Jund gets crushed. And the reason why I think the Jund is cards you may want to get out of at the moment is I think that Tron is going to be the new boogeyman. So they ban the Faithless Boot Looting and Hogak, and they leave Tron, and Tron traditionally that was its two worst matchups. Tron does pretty decent versus Jund, or Burn. It does exceptionally well versus Jund. Yes, they can build, Jund can build some strategies that are better versus Tron, but typically Tron is very good against mid-range, control, and any sort of deck that utilizes attrition like cards like Thoughtseize and Inquisition of Kozlik because they can top deck their way out. Basically, every card in their deck is, is an additional way to find their win condition. So it's very, very tough to disrupt Tron. Tron utilizes the top of their library very, very well. So the, the decks like Jund, I think, are going to struggle. Same thing with Azorius Control. So it makes me think that Tron is just going to go nuts. So a few decks that actually do good against Tron, we could go with some go-wise strategies. I think Goblins are actually in a pretty decent position uh, or any other aggressive deck that can race Tron. The other decks, though, that can't, I think are in bad shape. I think that combo gets a little bit better, too. Just the, the deck's going to be like, because Tron doesn't interact with, with many of them. Uh, so, but the thing was, well, the way that Tron's built this time around with the new Karn is they have a very good sideboard uh, that can be positioned to have game one um, play versus those. But I don't know. Actually, I, I, I'm, I'm not too prefer, uh, familiar with Tron versus the majority of the combo-based matchups. I have a lot of, of experience playing against Tron with many decks, but not as a combo. Don't play a lot of combo uh, versus Tron. So, But with, with Phoenix and Burn, or Phoenix and Hogak out of the way, I think Tron is going to be the big boogeyman card. Ancient Stirring still baffles me that it still exists. Um, that's a card I would have got rid of a long time. Like in my opinion, Manamorphos, Ancient Stirrings are, are, are two problematic cards in Modern that need to go. Simeon Spirit Guides, the other one that I get rid of. I think all three of those cards just make for unfun, uh, combo, fixing, consistency, like all those sorts of things I think are bad for a format. But I digress there. We're not talking about um, more bannings in this video. Uh, Tron, things that, that could go up in Tron. Definitely Ulamog could go back up in value. The Worm Coil Engine, I think, might get a little bit weaker. Like people have been talking about like Batter Skull and Tron. I don't I that's a stretch. Uh Thraktus could get a lot better though if Burn actually does have a rise from see, see that's two of the matchups that Burn was could be weak against as well. Like Hogak could race Burn and so could Arclight Phoenix. I think a lot of the times they didn't even care about any sort of life gain or any... I mean, some of the the, the Arclight Phoenix decks could run the Dragon Claw on the sideboard, and that was just a, a, a you know nail in the coffin versus burn. Uh, but, you know, the majority of them, they just didn't care. They just raced it. So the Thragtus could see more play if we're going to... Again, it gets more of a Jun-type format or burn Thraktus could see a little bit of a bump other than as you see right here it was printed in the commander deck so there goes that uh ancient stirrings could go nuts this is a card that if tron does just com com take over the meta ancient stirrings could be the card that goes up even more 
Um, and it's getting pretty pricey. It's three dollars for an uncommon, but again, I don't know where the ceiling is for or for a common. I don't know where the ceiling is for a common. Uh, Chromatic Star has a very very low supply uh, comparatively to Chromatic Sphere. That could easily go up. I'm expecting Expedition to go back up because it didn't get a reprint in the Commander. This is a card that needs to be consistently reprinted every year because of how much it does see play in Commander. Um, even a reprinting in Commander, I don't think would stave off the growth from Expedition Map. So this is another card that could go up. And I don't believe Relic was printed this year either in Commander. So this is another card that also could go up. The thing about Relic, though, is it might not see as much play as it used to with Hogak out of the way. Graveyard Strategies are, are still really, really prominent, even without Hogak. So there could be the argument still for Relic, even though the Phoenix and, and, and Hogak got nerfed. Uh, however, uh, again, this is a card that, that sees a lot of play through, throughout various formats. And if it doesn't see a reprint within a year, it should go up in value. Oblivion Stone is another one. This is a card that was just out of the, uh, what is that? So the Iconic Masters that is due to go up in value. So all those I think are, are pretty decent specs. However, I really warn you, I think that the next card to go out of Modern is going to be Ancient Stirrings to mix things up again when Tron does become the boogeyman. I, I think Tron has always been the problem in Modern. I think that with Tron existing, it really makes it tough for any sort of mid-range strategy to actually see play in the format. This is the, the type of decks that I've, I was, was playing to beat Hogak, just got tr crushed by Tron, like the Soul Sisters or the Screds. So those have a very, very tough time to beat Trons, even with Blood Moons, even with like dedicated hate, like Stony Silences and Blood Moons and whatnot. It was it was tough even at that point to beat Tron. So anyway, I think that this one is is very well uh, positioned to go up in value, and then it's going to keep a lot of these other decks from from seeing their full potential. Eldrazi Tron has a pretty decent matchup versus Tron. This is another. It also did well over the weekend. Some of these cards are poised to start going up, like the Reality Smasher and Thought Not Seer. Oath of Gatewatch is, is about that time, I would say. There still is a lot of supply of Oath of Gatewatch. You can still find booster boxes for $90, no problem. Uh, however, this could easily be a deck that could see a lot more play. Chalice gets weaker without Faithless Looting decks. That, uh, that might be another card that sh needs to be re- uh, yeah, revisited to see if it still has a place. I'm wondering, I'm wondering if it is I still good versus there's still a lot of decks that this completely shuts down. But yeah, a lot of them were Faithless Looting decks. So anyway, keep your eye on Chalice. I think it's a sell at this point. I don't think it's a buy. But yeah, could be wrong there. Anyway, that's kind of the gist of, of this week's market Monday. There's a lot of stuff going on in the market, but the TLRDR back to it is has some huge shakeups in modern. Keep your eye on the decks that come out week one or week two. We'll keep an eye on them as well, especially over at my other market channel over at the Rogue Market. If you're not subscribed, go subscribe to it. It's kind of a dead channel right now, but I'm going to revive it as we're back into the uh, summer's winding down. I'll have a lot more free time to do things uh, on those channels, so I'll revamp those. And we'll definitely keep an eye on the modern format for the Rogue Market. And then, yeah, lost my train of thought was where I was going. Anyway, this has been Kevin with the Rogue Deck Builder for Market Monday. Thanks for watching.